Months ago, two sets of complete strangers met at the CFCC bookstore. Among them, former NFL defensive tackle Jay Ross and Stephen Watson, who is no athlete, but has tackled several hundred critters as an animal services officer. We were all asked if we wanted to go through BLET, and I was like, full stop. <laughs> Yeah. No, thank you, but no, thank you. Some of our current deputies gave him a little motivational coaching and a new BLET haircut. <laughs> People all over the world know me by my hair. They do. It's the truth. It's true. It's a gift. I don't own it. If beauty brought Steven a little fame, four and a half years of pro football brought it to Jay. But the cost of the field is family, barely seeing them, and financial security, getting picked and dropped from teams. It was not worth all the time he was missing at the playground, so Jay decided to hang up his jersey. If anybody has ever talked to an ex-athlete, you go through like a depression phase, not really knowing what you're going to do next. All I wanted to do was either go to the gym or lay around on the couch. And she would come home from work and I had the couch smell like Frito Lay chips from where I'd just be laying there all day, my shoes off. And she told me, she was like, if you don't want to play football anymore, you need to go find something to do. So then one day he comes home and says, I'm going to apply to work in the sheriff's office. Why? <laughs> So many other things you could do. Um, it's scary. I look at it like my lieutenant says my head coach, or my sergeant says my position coach. Everybody that I work with, my teammate. Come on, there you go. So it's just kind of like I'm still in that same environment. Every once in a while, you still get that adrenaline rush that you used to. So. I mean, I, I think this is perfect for me here. Assuming he and everyone else can handle the Pope hat. Police officer's physical abilities test. You have to wrestle with a, a heavy bag. You have to get over a four foot chain link fence. You have to crawl underneath a two foot obstacle. And then on the rescue portion, you have to actually grab a 175-pound dummy, and you have to uh, move them specified distance. The first attempt, for pretty much everyone, was not a thing of beauty. You're going to do this with a bunch of 20-something <laughs> young bucks who probably eat more protein by 7 a.m. than you've had all year. <laughs> <laughs> My God, I'm not a donut slurping, <laughs> latte drinking. Steven is almost 50 and has not exactly lived a life of preservation. <laughs> There's been a lot of work that's had to go into this to bring myself out of the ashes. Several weeks of law books and tests later, it was time for practicals. You have to learn the physical aspect of arresting. If the person resists, how do they uh, control that person? What laws were broken? What do they see in front of them? How do they secure evidence? Control techniques, 12 hours of scenarios. So for a day and a half, they do nothing but answer calls. What to do when someone puts a gun to the back of their head? How and when to use their own firearm? And an unapologetic preview of what's ahead of them. We are constantly shown real videos of stops or calls that have gone bad and are now being used as training videos. Some of them are very difficult to watch. Not only because it's law enforcement, but it's another human being. And a lot of people don't see some of the stuff that goes on. While everybody in Wilmington is sleeping, you know, there's somebody patrolling your neighborhood, making sure nobody's breaking in or making sure you're safe. 
while you sleep, and a lot of people don't see that. And some people don't appreciate it, but you have a lot of people that do. Without question, driver training was the highlight for everyone except yours truly, who got severely car sick in the back seat. Performance at the Popat course dramatically improved to the point there was nothing to edit into a blooper reel. At the very end came a 300 question state exam covering everything they'd learned. Without a passing grade, it stops here. With one, training has just begun as each respective agency has several more weeks in store for them. After four months, they are back outside that bookstore again with the same director who handed them their very first textbook. It was time for their last huddle together before graduation. I always get them around me, and I've got a little motivation and talk that I always give them. But the big thing that I always tell them is you need to understand one important thing. After tonight, you are the one that are answering my 911 calls. A lot of people don't like to hear this, especially the public, but the most important person out there on the street as far as law enforcement goes is that individual officer. And that individual officer has to take care of themselves first and foremost. Because if that officer goes down in the fight, there is no one else left to carry on the fight. I was the oldest one in that class by 20 years, I think. Stephen Watson. Tonight, when they jumped up, that, I, that just moved me in ways I can't even put into words. I'm old enough to be their father. <laughs> and they were like super proud of me. It's made clear at any BLET graduation that applause is due for a very critical part of any law enforcement career, the families. I'm very proud of him. The love that Jay has for it kids and people in general, he'll be very great at what he does. They will have to endure every late shift, every stressful day, every holiday on duty, and every sudden call out. Which is why they take the stage too, making their promise of support to those who promise all of us to protect and serve.